Do line choices really make a difference during a race? It's super early in the morning, and I have to leave in order to make it to the Mayberry Mountain Bike Time Trial today at the Mayberry State Park. I'm looking to complete my goal of finishing five races to count towards the MMBA CPS overall for this season. That's the Michigan Mountain Bike Association Championship Point Series. Something I missed out on last year. There are only two races left. I did one this past weekend at Glacial Hills, and there is a final race at Addison Oaks, but can't make that one. I'm going to the UCI World Cup Finals in Snowshoe. Candy machine. You are backed up because there's birds crossing the road. That's funny. Uh, this is the venue here. You got people showing up. It's about an hour before race time. It's a time trial. So I'm gonna go warm up. And then it's race time. The first, last year's winner, oh really? <laughs> Mark Walters. Three, Catch you guys. Two, one, go! And the race is on. We got Rob Martin for Village Racing. Village. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. So when you race bikes, a lot of times it's hard to get to a course that's far away to pre-ride it. And that's exactly what happened with me for this race. I was not able to get across the state for a pre-ride. So we're gonna discuss how a pre-ride can really help you out by looking at how much better things were on the second lap. Knowing that giant concrete slab was there on the second lap definitely helped me out. Just by knowing where all the roots were on this climb helped me out a bunch on the second lap. When you don't hit the roots, you don't bounce, you're smoother, you can lay the power down and keep the power down and climb the hill with more of an ease. The sun isn't helping me out with my non-pre-ride. As you can see, it's a struggle and the sun just blares you in the eyeballs. The trail report was that the trail was a little loose, slick, because it had not had rain in a while. So I lowered my PSI and it was actually perfect. There were a lot of line choices in this section. I still think that this outside line was the best because it kept the flow of the corner. I did the same exact thing on the second lap as you can see. I may have to walk this section if I'm ever back. Here you can see on the first lap, I missed the straight line over the log piles, but on the second lap, boom, nailed it. My line choice on this section coming up was the same on the first and second lap. I felt like that was the fastest choice. Right there, I post a bar. I didn't do it on the second lap. Coming into this berm, I used the berm and didn't take the inside line and it really allowed me to carry a lot more speed around the corner. of obstacles around corners like that log pile would have helped to have the shock on. So the second lap, boom, shocks open, so much smoother. Going straight over the log pile was the money choice, and rocking the same decision on this log pile was also a good decision. When I came to this intersection, I thought the outside line was going to be faster, but when I exited, I realized the inside line was probably a lot faster, and actually was about a half a second faster. Up ahead around the corner, we have a funny route that can definitely take you off your game, lay you on the track right there. I actually slipped a little bit and almost slid out. The second time I knew to go a little wider and cut to the inside of that, which made that corner faster. The obvious choice here was to avoid the rock garden there. Just knowing what's around corners allows you to keep speed. Blind corners that may be sharp or blind corners that may be a little more sweeping where you can actually keep speed up helps a ton. In this section, the sun had me thinking the trail went straight, so coming in and out of the corner, I didn't do so well, but on the second lap, I knew what was coming and I was smoother coming in and out. 
Here's another faster section where knowing what's around the corner and how sharp it is helps to keep speed. So on the second lap I actually took a slightly different line and was actually able to go a little faster through this section even though it's already a fast section. I could plow through with more speed. I was definitely not on point through this section as I went right through the middle of the rocks and the bigger part of the drop. Second time through I made the correction and it was absolutely more faster by taking the far right side around the rocks which actually set me up for that corner better and around the tree. Another obvious choice here was to stay right. This section caught me off guard. In hindsight I think the drop is probably the fastest but I didn't want to burp my tire. The line I took the first time there took me right next to rocks and it could have ripped my derailleur off so the second lap the smarter choice was this right line. Here we have two choices coming up right here and right here and I think the right line was the best choice on both of those. Not sure what forced me to take the left line here but I made a mental note but I had a lot of mental notes in the second lap I made the same mistake and went left for some reason. I think the right line would have been better it was more direct and straight. This section would have been nice to walk because I could see a lot of different choices. I did stay right and the right line was the best line but the second time I took the far left it was a horrible decision. Two big roots, a rock garden, a whole lot slower. This dang sharp corner. It got me the first time really bad there all over the trail. And the second time I think I took a better line, but I really think that this would have been a good corner to stop and study. Coming in hot on the pavement, I didn't know how sharp the corner was or how straight the trail was afterwards. So on the second lap, it allowed for more speed on entry and up the trail. The straight line through this section was obviously better than going far left. As we approach the end, this corner was a disaster as I thought we were going straight, but there's a log across and I guess we're going this way. So second lap, I got a little better on that. Boom, knew which way we were going, kept the speed. And this was the last tricky section before the end of lap one. I went far left, which had some roots that almost slid me into the tree. So on the second lap, I noticed this nice, straight, smooth line that allowed me to keep the speed and up the hill. This is the start of lap two. And right from the get-go, we've got traffic. Lap one, I was slow due to not knowing the trail. And lap two, I was a little slow due to traffic. Bottom line is a pre-ride of a race course will definitely be a benefit to any rider. Knowing what's coming up on the trail can allow you to hammer as hard as you can if there's a downhill to recover on. Know what line to take when there are different options. Carry more speed through wider corners, skip the roots or rocks that steal speed, and give you that extra confidence on the trail. Pros all pre-ride courses for these exact reasons. Every little bit will help you be faster and a better race. Oh. That's a tacoed wheel. Post-race report, did pretty well. First lap was a little tough because it didn't know the course. Very turny, twisty, loose. So I had a lot of power stops and lot, I had to lay a lot of power down to get back on the horse. Second lap of the time trial went a lot better, a lot smoother. And I ended up second in the Elite today. Happy with that. That should seal me second place overall in the championship point series in the elite category for this season. Uh, then I drove over to Addison Oaks to watch my son race. It was his first MISCA race. And he got second in his division, a middle school division, sixth grade. So I was really excited to see that. Pumped. Good day on the bikes. I picked up someone in the back seat. She's watching a little Charlie in the Chocolate Factory munching on popcorn. Let me know in the comments below what else you think will be helpful in having a better race. I still get excited to get on my bike and race. Also be sure to grab some cool stickers. I put them on my car window. Remember, race videos will be posted here and there, so be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on anything exciting. If you like this video, check out one of these awesome videos on the screen by clicking on them.